keeps going. Uh, last year, 194 points. David Hatch out this week with ligament trouble. Mark Wakefield, who had such a splendid game in the first round of the National Panasonic Cup, will lead the team. He and John O'Connor, fine pair of halves, some speedy backs, some youthful forwards, and, of course, Jack Gibson, the man who's had five premierships in his career. The referee today, Michael Stone, with Cronulla winning the toss and electing to defend the railway or scoreboard end. Here we go. Canterbury kick it off. It's a deep one down to the corner. In fact, out on the full. So a mistake from Canterbury at the kickoff. Cronulla get a penalty right on the halfway mark. What a blue by the Premiers from the opening whistle. Certainly was, and uh, their coach Warren Ryan will be far from impressed by that. In these hot conditions, the team that get off to a flying start are going to catch, take some catching up. Bit of a move here, Eddingshausen sets it up. Wakefield makes a little bit of a bust. They elected to take the tap, and they're 10 inside Canterbury territory, but the ball's been lost to Tunks in that heavy tackle. It goes scrambling out again, and it's a knock-on this time. Two lengths there. I think it's Wakefield who's down after trying to make the break there. He got out of one tackle. He went down in a heavy knock. Let's see what happened. Well, this was a good move by the uh, the Sharks. Wakefield coming through and uh, Mortimer just taking him, well, as you can see for yourself. Not a low tackle. And that's the reason why he's having attention. In this uh, heat, you'll have a bit of a headache there, James. Just a reflex one from Mortimer. Well, that's what all the players say. Just <laughs> reflex. I don't think anybody will admit to one. 
Well, Wakefield's been in a brilliant form early in the season, and it was a, a hard, heavy, slightly high tackle. And it's been Cronulla's day so far until that tackle on Wakefield. They won the under 23s by two points, and in reserve grade, they took the points 28 10. So Cronulla, a good start to the day in the lower grades as Wakefield, groggily, with the, the assistance of the, the Massa, gets back into position. In fact, he's having a spell on the sideline. Canterbury get it out through the Mortimers. Chris Mortimer to play. That's Potter. Now Johnson on the inside. Folks is down. 40 out from the Cronulla line. Done. First touch of the day. Misses Folks. Finds Potter. Canterbury trying to organise it. It's Carney coming in from the wing for some heavy tackling. Now Lamb. Long wall. O'Brien into touch. But Canterbury looking pretty lively in attack. Moving it about. Keeping fairly good control. Wakefield back on the paddock to feed the scrum. Sharks ball, straight through the tunnel. Don't see many of those, Jim. That was a nice feed. Penalty to Canterbury. Didn't have a chance to get it through the tunnel that time. Well, I suppose you could uh, give him a little bit of let off, Mark Wakefield. He'll still be in dreamland, I think. So Lamb puts it over the line for O'Brien. And now Tunks to take the tap. Langmack. We're 10 out from the line here. Bulldogs attacking. Steve Mortimer. Johnson trying to burrow. Tunks. Now there's a lot of power in this Bulldog pack. They could express it very effectively in a moment. Dunn. Can he unload it? Yes. Laying back to Folks. O'Brien's there. O'Brien's in! Fine try to Canterbury. Good support. Nice linking on the line. And O'Brien getting a beautiful ball from Folks to score the first points of the game. Good try here. Notice done. That's what they bought. Paid a lot of money for him from Eastern Suburbs to bring him here. Got the ball away. Notice here you see Folks. Beautiful ball. Notice the ball kept alive. Exciting football, folks. Just stepped round. Sorensen realised he couldn't get any further. And that's what wingmen are there for. Finishing them off. Steve O'Brien would have enjoyed that. Back in the ranks of the the top team. What a good little ball it was from uh, Steve Folks. Some big men in that Canterbury pack. Dunn, Tunks, and uh, they coordinate the passes beautifully. And Terry Lamb a mile away from the post here. Cross breeze to contend with. He's hit it beautifully. Look at this kick. Yes. Whoa, what a beauty from Terry Lamb. Right out on the touchline. So five minutes gone in the game and Canterbury a useful early lead. Cronulla, some organising to do in their ranks. Particularly in defence with Hatch out. He does 30 or 40 tackles a week. And of course Jimmy sweeps up from the back. There was no cover to defence there. Carney with the long kick back towards O'Brien. Hot up. Johnson. Now Gillespie's back towards the quarter for Canterbury. They're coming out strongly from this position. Mortimer. Here's the kick. Lamb's got it. 
towards docking. Could be out in the full this. Yes, way out in the full. There's a slight cross breeze there. Lamb from the kickoff and from that kick didn't quite judge it, and the breeze did the rest. A chance for Cronulla to creep back into the action and get on the board here if they can win this scrum. They've got it. A switch to O'Connor. He thought there was a hold, but there was a back slam for him in the end. Eddinghausen. That's Jimmy Lease, of course, playing with Canterbury last year. Their new prop, Michael Wicks, came from Illawarra. Prominent in the headgear. Gets right into it. Wakefield. He had it, and then he didn't. I wonder how much that knock really did affect Wakefield. You can see Wakefield taking his eyes off the ball. That's what happens. And Terry Lamb with it after the Canterbury scrum win. Peter Mortimer. Johnson in there. Steve Mortimer. Lamb. Folks has got it. O'Brien. Nowhere to go. Johnson taken over the top by Craig Diamond Tunks good flip to Potter Diamond in there with Dane Sorensen they're back near halfway Steve Mortimer he drills it towards the line he's going to find Carney now Carney's having a go at them Docking. Coles in a dummy half. Docking up there. Wakefield's got it this time. O'Connor, who's chasing Eddinghausen and Mortimer. Steve Mortimer, but a penalty against the Canterbury defence. Steve Mortimer asking Mick Stone, what's the ruling, sir? Here it is. Well, there was no doubt about this. Very late and high. Referee Stone, no hesitation. Canterbury Territory. Wakefield. O'Connor was there, but look at that crunch from Langmack. Flooring loose. That's Diamond. And that's Canterbury's recipe, of course, in defence. They can really be solid at, in those tackles. Hit hard. Dane Sorens into Coles. Shake it up. Now Hillier cleaning the ball up. He's about 10 inside the Canterbury half. Wakefield for touch. Knocked down. Canterbury have got control through Dunn. Steve Mortimer. Langmack. Stepping well, but Coles held on like the leech. Steve Mortimer again. Nice pass for Peter. Peter Mortimer goes down. 6-0 to Canterbury here. Callanan. Folks. Steve Mortimer. Into touch. Well, Steve Mortimer involving himself constantly. Linking the play, kicking, defending. He's right in the middle of it today, Steve. He certainly is, and uh, it's what Canterbury needed. As I said, before the game, he was very lacklustre against Balmain. He's obviously having a lot of problems with that groin still. He certainly has injected himself early in the game. Cronulla eight errors to Canterbury's two so far. And Canterbury in a good position again down here. Lamb. Langmack. And Canterbury could sort Cronulla out here. There'll have to be some sharp defence. Watch this. Gillespie. Almost getting around to unload it. Johnson's in there. 
He fires at the Tunks. Tunks hesitated as he made sure of the, the ball on his fingers. Folks again. That's Lamb. Back to Folks. Chris Mortimer. Very nearly knocked, knocked on. Granada touched it. Six to go. Done. He's lost it. Granada have lost it. This time it's a scrum. The pass wasn't so good to Dunn. Relief for Cronulla. Well, the Bulldogs have come out blazing this game. There's no two ways about that, but Cronulla have got to get their one line of defence sorted out. They're allowing Canterbury a lot of leeway. Ball shot straight through the tunnel again. Where's Wakefield going to put it? It's a penalty against the Canterbury front row this time. Booting it out the tunnel. A real relieving kick for Cronulla. Give themselves a, a moment or two of respite to get back into this. Because at the moment, Canterbury out playing them. 6-0 ahead after 11 minutes. Sorensen. That's Wicks. Wakefield. Squeezed over by Lamb. Canterbury have got it. Straight back by Lamb. Collected by Johnson. Mortimer. Done. He looks dangerous. He gets around the tackles and he makes it available. Tunks. Gillespie. And Gillespie tried to do too much, but he's going to get the penalty. It's against docking. Be a shot at goal, but watch what happened here. Well, it's obvious referee Stone has called held. Gillespie looks at the referee, appeals, and gets the penalty. I like the ball distribution of Paul Dunn so far, Steve. -O. Yes, he's a good young player. There's no two ways about it. And his ambition, like most of the youngsters out there, they want to get on that kangaroo tour. End of the season. A great honour that is. He's got the skills as a young Dunn. Put some pressure for selection in the front row with Dunn, Tunks and Kelly to come back. Now it's Lamb with his shot. Much easier than his first kick, which he slotted from the sideline he's almost in front just a slight angle two more points it's eight nil to the bulldogs after 13 minutes in the game two goals to lamb and a try to o'brien what must granada do to get back into it i think their biggest problem is the fact that uh, wakefield when he got uh, injured in the first opening minute i think his marbles are still spinning round in there uh, jim going to take them a while before they settle down. Wakefield's had four errors so far. All after that heavy tackle. Potter's running it out. Hurst's up there. So's Wicks. O'Brien. Coles tries to get him low. Barrel by Wicks. Billy Johnson. Canterbury settling it. Now the run from Dunn. O'Connor went low on him. Lamb. Peter Mortimer. Well, this is good stuff to O'Brien. O'Brien near touch, but it went forward. He ruled a forward pass from Chris Mortimer to O'Brien. Well, this must have been... 50-50. Well, pretty awkward angle. The referee, McStone, no hesitation. Cronulla ball oh, was, a, was a great scrum in that one. Now, McGaw being wrestled to the ground out in the centres by Peter and Chris Mortimer. Docking gives it to Wakefield. Lease goes down, 10 inside Cronulla territory. What zip have they got with the ball? They've got to get back into it here. Hillier. Up to halfway. 
well grasped by Johnson. Craig Diamond, O'Connor, Eddinghausen chasing it. Potter's back there, it was too deep. Potter under control. And Potter going well, tremendous determination. O'Brien. Canelo are going to get into awful strife if they don't sort out this one line of defence. They're going up one out. That's Callanan doing a great job on the pen. Knocked off two of them. Steve Mortimer shows it, loses it. That's Wicks with it now. Dane Sorensen. Eight nil to Canterbury. Coles a dummy half. Wakefield on the blind. Back to Carney. Lease. Coles again. Wakefield. Wakefield trying to organise an attack there. It's the last shot for Cronulla here. Six tackle on its way. Carney boots it badly. Lamb loves it. He's jinking everywhere. O'Connor's got him by the scruff of the neck and says, down boy, stop there, play it. Steve Mortimer. Done. Look at that. Unloading again. He didn't go too far, but he's so strong, he can get rid of that ball all the time in the tackle. Chris Mortimer up the middle. Beautiful tackle from Hilliard. Johnson floats it. Folks, left footer. Here comes Docking. Gets the mully grabber and he's away. Folks followed up to make the tackle. Hurst has a run. Diamond. You can see the difference in defences there, Jim. Canterbury very keen indeed. Cronulla very slip shot. Carney's kick straight to Potter. Fine positional sense. He bounces off Wakefield. Wakefield comes again, but the pass to O'Brien. Eddinghausen did the damage on O'Brien. Chris Mortimer. Gritted his teeth and went straight at them. Steve Mortimer. Tunks. And it's a penalty against Cronulla inside the five. Mick Stone played a moment of advantage. Saw there wasn't one. It's just inside Cronulla territory. And what's Terry Lamb going to do? Kick for touch. On the breeze, he hooks it over Docking's head, well into touch. Looking very dangerous, Canterbury now. They're making ground every time they get the ball. So here it goes. Steve Mortimer to Lamb. Peter Mortimer. O'Connor made the tackle. Johnson there. Gillespie. Good charge. Look how the Cronulla side's opening up in defence here. Dunn. Tunks. Tunks still going. Hammering at the line. Lamb in there. Potter, well picked up by Peter Mortimer. Folks, Johnson, a metre out, last tackle. What's the tactic? Langmack inside, Potter's close. No try, double movement. Potter, double movement, but oh so close. A great last ditch tackle. Yes, you can see, definitely grounded and rolled over. Docking made the tackle just in the nick of time. It certainly was, and uh, Cronulla in all sorts of problems. I've no doubt in my mind that uh, the injury to Wakefield has upset the team pattern. He's the man that calls the shots. Sorensen, Diamond wrestled to the ground, taken ball and all there by folks. Wakefield. Busy player. 
not fully recovered from that early knock. But getting more and more involved. Lease. Gillia there. Dane Sorensen. Heat getting to some of these boys now. Wakefield. O'Connor charged down by Folks. Close to touch. A scramble from Chris Mortimer. And it ends up over the line. It went um, off Folks. Off his back. Once again, Jim, we saw the problems that Cronulla are having. And, uh, a little bit of a session talking to each other rather than getting the ball cleared. It's a nice scrum win again. Hurst has got it, almost went straight through the scrum. Gillia. Docking, Wakefield. Lamb made that beautiful low tackle. O'Connor. Diamond. Trying to set it up. But Johnson in there to help out Gillespie. Upsets it. Wakefield. This time he gets the kick in. Is it a good one? No, it's out on the full. So not much going right for Cronulla. The kicks are being charged down. And when they clear them, on that occasion, out on the full. I don't think it's the... Uh at the end of the matter, rather, Jim, I think we'll hear a lot more about the, uh, that incident. Had Wakefield having attention in the person. Peter Mortimer, Chris Mortimer, Steve Mortimer, intercepted by McGaw. McGaw's got some pace. O'Brien trying to chase him. Potter's after him. O'Brien's running him down. McGaw keeps going. O'Brien ankle zaps him. What a save. And Potter finished it off, but still a chance for Tornella. Quick play the ball they need here. first has got it. Keep it going, Cronulla. There's a chance for you here. O'Connor. And a penalty against Steve Mortimer. And it's off. Five minutes in the sin bin. Professional foul. Steve Mortimer into the sin bin. The home crowd boos, but there was no doubt about it. He had a tremendous hack and played the ball to try to upset the momentum of Cronulla's attack. And the Canterbury captain is off in the cooler for five minutes. No doubt about it, though, Jim. Referee Mike Stone, no hesitation. That was a good run by McGaugh. You can see Mortimer, bit of an interference, and tries to plant his left foot through the opposition's left foot. The man who made the intercept is down on the ground, Mark McGaugh. Getting attention to his knee as Carney lines up his first shot of the day. Carney, he's got it. First points of the day for the Sharks. It could easily have been six points the way they were moving on McGaw's break, but it's two. 8-2 at the moment, 23 minutes gone in the game. Wakefield's made uh, five errors to date, and in total, Cronulla have made 14 in Canterbury 8. That tells the tale of the story. Well, that was two points that Cronulla needed, but they could have got the six. Maybe the five minutes in the sin bin has been worthwhile. Hurst. Carney, Carney very strong, not a good ball though, Wakefield's dropped it, so at the moment Cronulla has 13 to Canterbury's 12 men, you see Carney making the half burst, it yeah. really wasn't on, and Wakefield once again, another error, it must be turning Jack Gibson inside out, Lamb feeding the scrum in uh, Mortimer's absence, the second time he's fed it. Somewhere in there. Tight head. Wakefield holds on to it. Now a chance for Cronulla here. Let's see how they can get it moving on this Canterbury defence. Shy of Steve Mortimer. 
Wicks. Wakefield. Craig Diamond. Docking. Wakefield. Carney chasing it strongly. Potter's there. And he's bowled over by Carter. Callanan. Langman. Craig Diamond took him with a sweeping tackle around the ankles. Lamb clears it. Looking for touch. It's running beautifully. It finds touch. Ten metres out from the Cronulla line. Good tactics by Lamb there. You see Lamb, beautiful positional kick. Momentum of the ball does the rest. Canterbury slowly getting down to the scrum. Five man pack. Wakefield's got it. You can hear some protests from some of the Canterbury forwards about that feed. Oh, what happened there? There were a couple taken out. It was Peter Mortimer first, and then Paul Dunn hit McGaw. Docking copped it from Peter Mortimer. I think just a reflex action, but watch it. Well, a pretty high reflex action, if you ask me. Gee. Certainly yeah. looked worse on the replay. This is the sort of thing that gives you headaches. And what's done, you see, bump the war out of the way. That wasn't so bad, but... Oof. Steve Mortimer's had his five minutes in the sin bin. The crowd right behind him, as you'd expect, as he's back on the paddock. O'Connor. Eddinghausen. Wakefield slips. Carney looking for some space and touch. O'Brien chasing it back. It beats him. A good kick from Dean Carney. Now a chance for Cronulla. They'll have the loose head down there. 15 out from the Canterbury line. Beautiful kick by Carney. Big, strong boy, this fella. And good position. Bulldogs have got it. 11 minutes left in this half. It's 8 2 to Canterbury. Lamb and Langman. Lamb again. Steve Mortimer. Thrust back by O'Connor, who's stolen the ball. Nick Stone, no, he hasn't stolen it. <laughs> Mortimer's got it, count starts again. I could have sworn O'Connor had the ball there for a moment. Well, I don't know, but I think Mortimer must have asked him to give it back. And I think he did. Lamb, Chris Mortimer, Peter Mortimer, folks out wide. Folks throws the ball to Lamb. Now Lamb's got support, away goes to Gillespie. Gillespie's powerful. The pass picked up by O'Brien. Was it forward? No, it's a try. O'Brien's second try. And O'Brien did the right thing. He waited for the ball. It bounced the right way after Gillespie lobbed it in field. Canterbury further ahead. Tremendous break, and it was folks involved in it. Good play, good ball out there from Lamb. This is Canterbury of old. This is what made them so exciting to watch over the last decade. Beautiful break, the passing side. Gillespie showing a lot of speed here. A little bit slack for the pass, but in a backward direction. 
O'Brien, second try of the game. There you see Lamb. That's what he's famous for, the support play. And the second rowers love to get the break. Just a wayward pass. O'Brien did the right thing. He didn't attempt to take the awkward ball. Let it bounce first and got away with it. About the same spot that he made an earlier conversion. And this time it's swinging, but will it make it? No, inside the posts. Didn't quite get the contact, so it's 12 2 to the Bulldogs. Nine minutes left in this first half. Another missing the tackles. 13 counted his five. John O'Connor having a little neck trouble there, getting some treatment while that conversion attempt was being taken. A lot of concern for the 5 8 there. Certainly in the wars, the Sharks. Almost a collision. A knock on, but that was a fortunate result because Potter and O'Brien could well have collided head on there as Potter came flying in in front of O'Brien. And in the end, the well, knock is, on was a good way out. This is very, very rare. You see two experienced footballers not calling for the ball. It's lost. O'Connor's got it, and he very nearly struggled over to score. But for that last ditch tackle from Lamb. Canterbury have another go in the play of the ball. Trying to spoil it. What a chance for Cronulla. Sorensen. They really do need a driver for the break. Coles in a dummy half. Diamond. Slammed to the ground by Dutt. Coles again. Hilliard. Last tackle. That was quick. Coles. Coles on his own. Can't squeeze out the pass. It's a handover on the final tackle. Cronulla missing their opportunity. They certainly did. They should have had plenty of time to set up there. All they did was just waste five tackles with settlers and came up with virtually nothing. Callanan. Lamb, Folks, Folks has had a big game. Chris Mortimer, Tunks is there, Tunks is down, well tackled by Wicks. Lamb, charged down by Diamond, knocked on by O'Connor. Count starts again for the Bulldogs. Langman, Mortimer, that's Potter. Five minutes left in this first half. Peter Mortimer. Wick strong on the tackle again. Billy Johnson, lovely dummy. Makes a clearance of about 15 metres. Langmack. Lamb. Pokes again. Chris Mortimer onto the pass. Firing onto it. First picked him up. Cover from Dunn. Lamb again. Shuttles it out. Docking's got it. Beautiful take. Angle tap by, by Lamb. That upset Docking as he tried to squeeze back. Piggyback ride from O'Brien on Hurst. Wakefield. Eddinghausen. Almost gave it to Carney. Instead, he's given a penalty away. From a misunderstanding and a, and a shepherd. That really was a bad one there. And that's the sort of thing that sends coaches, well, mad. I thought you were going to say ripping their hair out, but some of them have lost it already.
frustrating first half for the Sharks. And it, uh, from the moment Wakefield was taken in that high tackle by Mortimer, they've had really no rhythm, apart from the odd burst with an intercept and just down near the line a moment ago. That's right. It looked at one point where Canterbury was going to take so much control of the game, I was looking towards a cricket score. Their defence was absolutely in tatters. It's going up one, one out. Not a straight line of defence. Completely the opposite. With the Canterbury side, they're eager and keen. They're causing a lot of problems. Trainers come on the field to uh, attend to one of the Canada players. And Mick Stone is calling him up. It's a distraction for the goal kicker. That's uh, something you don't see too often. Lamb's poised, the trainer's off the field. And Lamb has kicked it. Fine kick from Terry Lamb. He's only missed one today, and he's had a couple of angled kicks from a long way out. Look at that lead for Canterbury. 12 points clear, three minutes to go in the first half. Got to take a superhuman effort by the Sharks to get back into this game. They really have shown no class whatsoever. Carney restarts it. Now, someone's going to call for it. <laughs> Potter gives it to O'Brien. That was much cleaner than the, the last kickoff, which uh, could have resulted in a, a very nasty prang between the two of them. Folks is going to play it. Johnson's got it. Up goes Langmack. There goes Chris Mortimer. Wicks in for the low tackle again. Steve Mortimer. Tunts goes with him. He misses him out. Lamb's got it. Wide of the ruck, it's Peter Mortimer. Skipping. Callanan in possession, just inside Canterbury Territory. Steve Mortimer, done. Shows it, throws it. Counts. The ball was knocked down. Count starts again. Folks. O'Connor grasped him, just in Cronulla Territory. Tunks. Unloads. Loose. Count starts yet again. More pressure for Cronulla. Dunn. Hangs on to it this time. Lamb. Folks. Basketball pass. Ends up with Tunks. What a tackle from uh, Wicks. Right around the boots again. They're lively though. Peter Mortimer. Left and right, then up the middle. Which way? Steve Mortimer? Dunn. Dunn busts them. What a good run by Dunn to Lamb. It's hot potato. Steve Mortimer's going to score under the post. Paul Dunn started that. Steve Mortimer finished it. Canterbury's third try. What a lead for the Bulldogs just before half time. And watch for some classy play here from the big prop. Well, they're just tearing this Cronulla defence. There you can see they were just stood there, not moving up in one line at all. Some of them just having a talk. Dunn says, thank you. Inside the Lamb. I want to prefer Langmack and Steve Mortimer. Thank you very much indeed. And that's the ball game. And Mortimer applauding the work of his teammates in creating that try. He finished it. But there was some good teamwork, good support play inside after Paul Dunn made that break. Now Lamb has a throwover kick here to give Canterbury a spectacular halftime lead. Lamb kicks it. Lamb's fourth goal, three tries and four goals. And let's go back and look at the try. Here's Dunn after making the break. Lamb back inside. As always, good support play there. Langmack inside to Mortimer. And it really is a woeful display in defence by the Sharks. But let's not take anything away from the Canterbury side. They were there to back up the man with the ball and did he successfully. 
Tyrant goes for half time as Carney kicks off. It's too big. It goes dead, and Mick Stone says that's it. Don't have a cool drink, fellas. And Cronulla, they'll be looking for something strong to get them going. That's uh, Fiona Coop. Remarkable recovery after two heart transplant operations. And great to see her out here watching the Bulldogs in action against Cronulla today. And what a half for the Bulldogs. Three tries, two to O'Brien, one to Mortimer. Lambs kicked four goals from five attempts. Cronulla's only points from the boot of Dean Carney. So at half time, it's Canterbury 20 and Cronulla 2. Cronulla side, rather, to tell you about in a moment. Dunks has got the ball. Now, in the Cronulla side, Mark Wakefield has been replaced by reserve grader Paul Kennedy. And um, one of the reasons that's happened, we will shown to you in a moment, as we watch uh, Lamb kick for touch. Docking takes it beautifully. Back towards halfway. Ten metres in Cronulla territory. Diamond. Dane Sorensen. Right on halfway. Coles. Lease. Canterbury leading 20 to 2. Hilly up. That's Kennedy, the replacement for Wakefield, and he's put it out on the floor. Now, this was the incident early in the game which sent Wakefield down, and was Mortimer's tackle fair or unfair? I let you decide out there. <laughs> yeah, right. Leave it to the viewers. The referee at the time. Uh, let it go on. Wakefield took a long while to recover. And in fact, Jack Gibson's made a bit of a point of it at half time, replacing him. That's done. Tunks. Steve Mortimer. Potter's little kick. Oh, first had no chance. No chance at all. When things are going bad, they really do turn sour, and Cronulla can't seem to do anything right. Got off to a bad start. That injury to their skipper. Mark Wakefield, they're really up against it in the second half. Kennedy. Lease. Hilly up. That's O'Connor. Got through a lot of tackles in the first half. 16 for the Sharks. He was the leading tackler and he's put in a great kick. Callanan scrambling with it. Carney chasing him. He's got away from Carney. And finally it's McGaw with the help of McCarney. McCarney gets him down. O'Brien. Gillespie. Johnson, Mortimer, he's away, where's the support, no one there, done, Tunks, what a beautiful ball that went to Langmack, done, Tunks, Langmack, great stuff, and a penalty against Docking, and now our corner being called up by referee Mick Stone. You can see here, holding the man down. 
right in front of the referee. And I think a little bit of desperation setting into the Sharks now. I think they're looking towards to seeing the end of this game as quickly as possible. At 20 points to two, still a lot of life left in the Bulldogs. Callanan, ridden down to the ground by Diamond. Gillespie, couldn't squeeze the pass away. He's lost the ball as he went down there trying to slip it. And McStone indicating what happened. Cronulla have missed nine tackles so far in this half. We've only had six minutes of play. Possession even in the first half. Docking. Hilly up. It's Diamond. There's another replacement out there for Kamala too. It's Whitbread on the field I've, I've spotted. And Greg Nixon's out there for McGaw. Callanan. Mortimer, that's wide to Potter. Gillespie goes down, dragged to the ground by Hillier. Steve Mortimer now. Folks, away through Chris to Peter Mortimer. Good backing up, Chris Mortimer. Lamb on the infield. Lamb's got some pace and the setup to Callanan. One more pass to Folks, and he's in for a great Bulldogs try. Tremendous play. Folks, who had a very good first half. Reward for him scoring that try, backing up. Tremendous Bulldogs performance. Their fourth try. Great play by the Bulldogs. This is really great support play. But I have to be critical once again. You can see there that the Cronulla defence hanging off. But good play by the Canterbury side. Kept the ball alive. Watch how the wingman comes inside and then realises, gets the ball away. And like any second, good, good second rower, Stephen Folks, a good try. Beautiful ball. Lamb, this is what he's famous for. Always backing up the man with the ball. And good play by Callinan. And that's an easy passage for the second row of folks. Man again, five goals. 26-2 to Canterbury, and plenty of room to score a lot more tries. Now the Sharks, have made a couple of replacements. We had Wakefield off at half-time, replaced by Paul Kennedy. Greg Nixon is on for Mark McGaw. And uh, Errol Hillier has just left the field. Carney restarts it. Peter Mortimer. Chris Mortimer. Gillespie. Tunks. Potter. Lamb. Pokes on to... Peter Mortimer again. Folks has been involved in so much of that play out wide today. Tremendous game from him. Kick charge down, goes out on the full.
Mark Ellison replacing Errol Hillier. I think if Gibson had his way, he'd like to replace a lot. Carney finds touch and Cronulla need to find some uh, enthusiasm, a bit of spirit here. Errol Hillier, who went off a moment ago, is having uh, some stitches to his face after some incident. That's the replacement, Mark Ellison, 22. O'Connor chips ahead, Eddinghausen flying after it, gets a boot to it, no. Away came Potter from the back, a good save. Steve Mortimer, Pokes, Lamb. There's some trouble here, Peter Mortimer. Around Lease, Pokes again. Callanan. Callanan still going to Johnson. Steve Mortimer, Folks. Lamb loses it. Went back. Peter Mortimer, Steve Mortimer, Callanan. Last tackle for the Bulldogs. Steve Mortimer. Beautiful dummies. Tunks with support to Lamb. Another pass. But it was off the ground. Lamb was on the ground when he passed the ball. But what a very, very clever break by Steve Mortimer. He really foxed them. Good play by support. Once again by Lamb. <laughs> Cheekily tried to get it away. The referee had no option but give that penalty. But they really are running riot now. Frenella are a very, very dispirited side. Canterbury attack just doing what they want. Coles with the tap. Wicks. Wicks has lost it. Canterbury have got it again. Peter Mortimer. Done. That's Gillespie. Nixon going in there to help out Dane Sorensen. Lamb. Langmack. Peter Mortimer. Chris Mortimer. Lamb again. Neat one for Dunn. Couldn't hold it, Johnson. Nor could Docking. He's got it now. Docking getting the ball just as uh, Canterbury looked like getting a scrum. Wicks. Crunch to Folks And Gillespie. Mark Ellison to play it. Hurst's up there. Hurst's been a bit lonely on the wing. Has a go. Johnson's got the headgear against him. Explain that one to me. Well, it's simple as this. Hookers sometimes do run riot and lose their cool. He said, I don't like headgear and I don't see that you should have one either. Interesting one, that. Uh, ripping your headgear off. Is well, it was, it was brought out last season. Yeah. Anyone interfering with any headgear will be penalised. It wasn't much of a throw anyway. The headgear only went about 10 yards. They say the same about boots. You chuck them off a feet. 
They don't wear them on the head. <laughs> Dead zones in the play. That's cold. Nixon to Lease, but he says it was forward. It's not Cronulla's day. Probably was, but uh, there wasn't much in it. I'm going to have a scrum. You'll see it again. Pretty awkward angle, but I think there's no doubt. Really has been a bad day for the Cronulla Sharks, and in fact, it's a long time since I've seen a Jack Gibson side play so bad in defence. They missed 35 tickle t tackles. Tickles. That's about what they've been doing as well. <laughs> Tickling rather than tackling. 35 of them. Now he's, he's down over there getting attention in the counter. In fact, um, all the players taking a moment out for a breather and a gurgle. Let's look at some early scores today. That was under 23s and in reserve grade. Cronulla had a win, a very big win. 28 to 10. We're back with the action. Peter Mortimer. Callanan. Dunn. Grafting Billy Johnson, the headgear remover, getting it for Mortimer to put out on the fall. That again caught a whiff of breeze and blew over the touchline for a scrum back in Canterbury's territory. So there's plenty of time left. Cronulla, in theory, can still get back into the action. That would be amazing the way they're going. On the other hand, Canterbury could well score a couple of great tries to finish with. Look at this, Lamb's got it. Langmack to Folks. Callanan, Gillespie, Gillespie trotting through them. Ankle tap by Kennedy. Steve Mortimer, Lamb, Peter Mortimer, now Langmack, Chris Mortimer. Potter. There's plenty of room to move out there. Defence on the back foot. Steve Mortimer. Tunks. Johnson. There's Gillespie. Here we go. Langmack to Callanan for the corner. He's sprinting for it. He doesn't get there. He's into touch. Just into touch. The cover just picked him up. Good play by the wingman. Puts his head down, he knows where the corner is. Luckily for Cronulla. Here you see, trying to squeeze in. But no try. There are a few more heated players out there. They're really perspiring in this uh, March humidity. Quick report from Touch Judge. It's a Cronulla feed. It's a Cronulla ball. Langmack quickly off the scrum. Kennedy to play it. Carney running it out. Peter Mortimer trying to lift him with his brother. Carney too strong for them. Docking. Scragged to the ground by Mortimer Incorporated. But it's a penalty. Too much of it. <laughs> Well, there's the difference in the two sides. The enthusiasm of Canterbury and the Trinella side, very, very lacklustre indeed. Here you see two players getting involved into the tackle. A little bit too much for referee McStone. That has been the difference. Plenty of enthusiasm by the Bulldogs this afternoon. 
And while you were watching that, Chris Mortimer came up with Steve Mortimer to ask Mick Stone about it all. And you could see a lecture being given by Steve to his brother. Callanan taking it up with uh, Carney at blue there. Should have put it out. Done. So Canterbury in the hot spot again on the quarter line. They can move it left and right. Back up and score. Lamb. Langmack. Squeeze to Peter Mortimer. Bumped loose. Picked up offside. Peter Mortimer. Granada to reply with a kick. But uh, again, Canterbury looking lively with the ball. He's a little bit of a dangerous one here. Mortimer, a little bit of a problem. His brother says thank you. I'm offside. Disapproval from the crowd. They want more tries. Come to think of it, so do we. Fifth penalty in a row for the Sharks. Hasn't done anything to their score. Only two points on the board. Dane Sorensen. He loses it. <laughs> Got it back quickly. No problem. O'Connor, wide of the ruck. Oh, then Dockey. Peter Mortimer up fast again. He's had a big game in the centres. Diamond, caught on halfway. Nixon, he's lost it. Gillespie's rolled onto it. Steve Mortimer to Dunn. Some of those strong Canterbury forwards continually weighing the Canola defence. Folks. Tunks. Picks it up again. It's still alive. Chris Mortimer to Johnson. Support there for Johnson. He goes down in the tackle of Lease and Sorensen. Gillespie. Gillespie and Mark Ellison having a physical con conversation. Langmack ran into Dunn. That's a Shepherd. That's a penalty. Not surprisingly, here you see Canterbury trying out a few moves and just to prove they don't always come off. So that's the sixth penalty on a string to Cronulla. Now, after quite a while, they get back inside Canterbury's half. And come on, Sharks, get some points on the board. Your fans down near the beaches are waiting for it. Some of the ground, too. Wicks to play it. Sorensen takes it up. Coles. Kennedy. That's O'Connor. Charged down by Lamb. Picked up by Lease. Coughs up somehow. And Canterbury have got it. Gillespie. Going to play it. Coles apparently interfered. He's been penalised. And a quick kick from Lamb finds touch. Back in Cronulla territory. Now let's see what Canterbury have got here. They tried out a few moves a moment ago. We want to see a few more. Well, it's just turning out into a training run for the Bulldogs. They'll be going through all their moves, all their patterns. And why not? There's very little opposition out there. Steve Mortimer. It's Lamb wide of the ruck to Langmack. Kennedy and O'Connor, the halves have got him. Johnson, Steve Mortimer, Lamb, Peter Mortimer, Chris Mortimer alongside him, but a good tackle from Nixon stops the action. Potter. Some of these boys are melting. Steve Mortimer, for touch. No, for docking. Lamb back there for the arrest. Lease and Carney, and back they go.
first. Diamond. Hurst again. Tackles mount up. Cronulla goes sideways. Ellison resorts to the high kick. Too big. Back for a scrum. It's a new clock. And it says 20 minutes to go. I thought that might have been the temperature thermometer going up there towards 40 degrees. Well, it's not as high as Jack Gibson's blood pressure. <laughs> O'Connor, wide of the rucks, Eddinghausen. Nice fend. He's still going, but sideways. Diamond links up with Hurst, does he? He's trying to. Doggedly getting back onto his feet, but down he goes. Hurst again. Eddinghausen, Ellison, Kennedy, to Lease, Coles, watch the kick someone says, there it is, Eddinghausen on the chase, O'Brien waits, he gets it, Eddinghausen gets it. Steve Mortimer, Callanan, he's coming off the wing, have a go. County has a go at him, spears his legs, Peter Mortimer. It's just been amazing the amount of room that Canola have allowed Canterbury. Every play of the ball they're making 10, 15 metres. Tunks. How much then have they missed Hatch? And a few others, perhaps. May have needed a few extra men to stop this. Lamb, long ball for Callanan. Callanan shapes to come back in, Phil, with a kick. Slips it to Folks. Folks has Mortimer in support. He's after it. Who's going to get there first? Mortimer. Steve Mortimer scores the try. Wasn't that a beauty? His second try of the game. That was a Steve Mortimer of old. Kick and chase and score the try. Big lead for Canterbury. Here it is. Great play. Out to Lamb. Beautiful long ball out to the wingman. Callanan did well here. Good step. This is a woeful tackle. Attempted tackle by the Cronulla defence. Folks had a great game. And here's Mr Magic. See if we can see the grin on his face. Look at the support play here. He realised he didn't want to take him on full straight, kick the ball over. He knew where it was going. And he says, come to daddy. It's been a good day for Terry Lamb too. Boot, general play. Hagen mightn't get back for a few weeks. On this performance, you can't leave him out. He's been kicking well. Distribution has been excellent. He's backing up as ever. Superb. Here's Lamb for two more points. Yes, great through. Goal number six for Terry Lamb. Five tries, six goals. 30 points clear. 12 minutes to go. Who would have thought that? The enthusiastic Sharks came today with big raps after beating Eastern Suburbs last week. And they've crashed to a mighty side. The Premiers, Canterbury, they played very well. They've got it all together. And at 32-2, there's going to be some lucky footy tab fella out there. Lang Mack. I bet he's not a shark supporter, whoever wins the footy tab today. Callanan. Callanan, they won't put him down. Johnson to Tunks. 
Got it away to Langmack. Now Steve Mortimer. That's Chris Mortimer. Lamb. Chip ahead in field. Docking to recover. <laughs> Lamb dived and missed. O'Brien didn't. Your replacements ready to come on for Cronulla. Brad Perry for the Sharks, Sandy Campbell. Callanan's come off. He's had a big game as the wingman. Sandy Campbell on for Callanan as the Sharks get to halfway. Nixon's there. Lease loses it. Johnson says thanks. Let's go again, fellas. Tanks. Time for a few more tries. Steve Mortimer. Folks. O'Connor takes him. Potter was knocked down. Langmack, Steve Mortimer, that's Peter Mortimer. Wicks has got in a lot of tackles. Steve Mortimer, Langmack. Beautiful one to Potter. Potter splits them. There goes Terry Lamb. Lamb is going to score this one. A field day for the Bulldogs and for Terry Lamb. Lamb, personal tally of 16 points now. Potter Power, all right. He was in the line beautifully. And I think for a moment, Lamb was going to give the pass to Steve Mortimer. And Mortimer said, go, you can score it. Yeah, it's good play here. Good switch. Bringing in the young kid here. Racing away. Beautiful play by Potter. Held it at the right moment. And once again, Terry Lamb. He'll have nothing better than to back up the man with the ball. Excellent player. Try number six. Notice how the fullback keeps his cool. Didn't want to do too much. Awful attempt by Lease to try to get Lamb. Mortimer saying, no, I've given up halfway. You can make it yourself. Steve Mortimer's coming off. goes Mortimer, he's been replaced. He's had a mixed game, but a good one. Lamb puts it through. So eight minutes left. Lamb's seventh goal goes up on the board, and it's 38 to 2. Gillespie. Michael Hagen's come on for Mortimer. Here he is. Wicks he gets a, a surprise ball. Now come on, Cronulla. A little bit of spirit to finish with. Brad Perry played well in the trials. Lease. Coles in a dummy half. Carney. All over the place now, Cronulla. Brad Perry to play it back on the last tackle for the Sharks. Haven't been down this end for a while. Kennedy. The grubber off Campbell. It's loose. Campbell feels it 
on his backside, rolls over just in time. Potter, Potter, what a break. That's Gillespie. Great stuff, Chris Mortimer's straight through them. Lang Mack. There's Lamb. Lamb's got support, but they make a mess of it this time. It started so well, that break. It looked for sure a try. But we'll see the pass go down. Beautiful inside pass there by Lang Mack to Lamb. And this is how easy it's been for Cronulla. Lamb had all the time in the world. It's just a bad pass that let the side down. Canterbury get a penalty against Kennedy. It's a frustrated, incorrect scene. <laughs> really has been a paper thin defence by the Sharks. No less than 42 missed tackles by Cronulla Sutherland. That's one missed tackle every two minutes. Campbell. Folks. Johnson. Lamb. Who's out there? Oh, it went forward from the Hagen to Langmack. the joys of rugby league last week very happy Cronulla Sharks dressing room after beating Eastern Suburbs it's going to be a sad one today come up against the big boys and hasn't it shown it's Brad Perry Carney Docking, O'Connor, Eddinghausen, they're not going anywhere. Folks in for another tackle. Carney, Nixon, Peter Tunks getting through the game well here today. Big man, hot day, still thriving in it. Last one for the Sharks, chance to, to clear it about a bit of innovation well it's a sideways kick to O'Brien Eddinghausen didn't mean it to go there and O'Brien to Chris Mortimer 38 to 2 Bulldogs in front Dunn Lamb Tunks, that's Hagen, Langmack to Folks. Well, Cronulla have got it. Time slipping by for them to get their only try. Coles, Carney, docking off Diamond, docking sprints well. Potter's made the tackle. Justin Canterbury turned. Perry. Perry, still going. Kennedy. The pass, he couldn't quite make it. Stone says it's a knock-on.
Good play there by Carney. At least he did try to come in to get himself involved into the game. And I think after this display, another coach, Jack Gibson, will be looking towards Carney in the centres rather than on the wing. You see the nice switch inside. Good support play by Carney. Strong boy. And just a little knock on. There it is. So things not going at all well for the Sharks this afternoon. I think Gibson will wield the axe. Canterbury a penalty against the Cronulla front row. Cronulla have had their fair share of penalties, but they've been no good to them today. Outplayed from about the 10th minute of the game. Steve Folks, player of the match, 26 tackles, scored a try, made the first try with a beautiful little pass. Great game. Great game indeed. He's been in everything, defence and attack. LSB. Lang Mac in there. Right on the halfway. Terry Lamb. For the touchline. Flat on the foot. Just too long. Just to prove that he's human, that it is. Full time, it's 38 to 2 in favour of Canterbury. They scored six tries, two to O'Brien, two to Steve Mortimer, one to Lamb and one to Popes. Lamb added seven goals. Cronulla's only points came from the boot of Dean Carney. Steve-O? Yes, a good win by Canterbury. They really have bounced back to their best. Good show, but you have to be critical of the Cronulla defence. They allowed the, uh, the, the Bulldogs far too much latitude. 44 missed tackles, and that tells the story. And the story, at 38 points to two, I don't think there'll be many footy tab winners out there, Jim. And for all those punters, we'll be giving you that result, the dividend at the studio of the footy tab. So that's the score at the end of the game. Canterbury chalked up a big half-time lead, and they went on to win the match 38 to two which of course included six tries to nil, and that is somewhat of a whipping uh, for Cronulla. Canterbury really looked that professional side that I suggested they were, particularly with Mortar, as I said earlier, with his finger on the pulse. Had a few indiscretions, but generally his play was excellent. Canterbury really make full, uh, full use of the possession that they get, and that is the important thing about this Canterbury side. Very rarely lose the ball, they cover well in defence, and in attack they so support each other magnificently. Folks try in the eighth minute of the second half was a magnificent effort of full support. So Canterbury now have notched their first win of the season, as you recall, they were last year's premiers. So they're going very well. As far as the Cronulla side is concerned, well, Jack Gibson must be very, very and bitterly disappointed. I know if I was coach, I would be. I thought that today that Canterbury would win it, but I thought the difference would probably be only about eight points. And 38 to two is, as I said earlier, a big whipping. I don't know what Jack uh, Gibson can do with this side because it's a very enthusiastic side and perhaps that's one thing going for him. But if they don't tackle better than they have done in, in this particular match, they really have a major problem. Today they came up really one up all the time and of course this was aided and abetted uh, Canterbury because they love to have plenty of mo room to move in. As far as the uh, uh, Cronulla attack was concerned, well it was basically nil, a little bit like the um, tackling of uh, uh, which was also very spasmodic. Well there it was, uh, a good win for Canterbury, they've got their two points and Cronulla have some problems. Thanks Trev. And the footy tab dividend today was 